today I'm going to go over how to build a rocket in OpenRocket, or at least how to design one. So let's assume you've decided you want to build a level 1 rocket, maybe one with a H242 motor, and you've decided you wanted to make it 3 inch diameter. The first thing you have to do is you start with your nose cone up here. You just click on it, and it'll add it for you. Now, in here are the parameters for your nose cone. And if you want a 3 inch diameter uh, nose cone, you need to set your diameter here to be 3. You can, and then that'll change your nose cone down here. Now you can fill out all these parameters, or you can select a preset. So you can go to the database here and search 3.0. And this is a commercially available nose cone that is you know, about three inches in diameter and it's a pretty good option. You can just put it in, it fills in all the details for you. So that makes that very easy. Then you want to start adding body tubes, you know, the tubing of your rocket. Open Rocket will fill in the uh, thickness of the tube and the uh, diameter of the tube automatically based on the diameter of the nose cone, so you don't have to deal with that unless you want to later. Uh, you probably want to make this longer, so let's say 20 inches like that. Now, you're going to have the top part of your rocket separate and the bottom half uh, stay behind, for, or separate from the bottom half, and the parachute will come out. So to put them together, you need to have a coupler in between. So again, you can just, it'll calculate everything automatically, you don't have to worry about that. You just need to change the length of it so that it's correct. So let's set this to be 6 or something like that. It's a good rule of thumb to make it as long in each direction as the diameter of the tube. So you can change the plus of any item here, any item in open rocket, in order to move it up and down. So for this, you just want to set it in the middle like that, so it sticks in on one side, and you can glue it in here, and then sticks out the other side, and that'll just be loose, let the bottom half slide off. You also want to add a bulkhead here, uh, just so that the ejection charges of the motor will push against something. Uh, now typically at Rambling Rocket Club, all our bulkheads and flat components are made out of plywood, quarter inch generally, although you have the option of doing it in eighth inch. So I'll just set it to be that. The default material for everything in Open Rocket is cardboard, so that's just something to watch out for. Unless it's meant to be cardboard, you should change it and check everything. You can set the thickness there also. And again, the diameter is calculated automatically. It should be fine. Ha, huh. except for the coupler, where it's not calculated automatically. Um, so th this brings us to our website over here, where you can go under For Members Resources. And then under Build, you can see Tubing Dimensions. And this gives the dimensions of the tubes we have. So if we're using, let's say, the 3-inch brown tube, that'll be 0 0.85, 0 0.085 inches thick. So you can set it like that. The, the outer tube should be calculated automatically. Let's see if it got it right. Frankly, close enough. Um, so after this, you want to add another body tube underneath. Uh, again, calculate things automatically, except for length. Let's set it to be 20. We can change these values later. These are just placeholders. Uh, so now we need to add a inner tube, because the H242 motor is 38 millimeters in diameter whereas your rocket is three inches, right? So you need a separate tube in the middle. That'll be the right size. So again, we can go over here, see what, what the uh, 38 millimeter motor is. 
So the outer diameter of that is 1.67 inches. This is all in inches, by the way. 1.67. The wall thickness is 0 0.07. So let's get that right. It's cardboard. Uh, let's set the length to be 8, maybe, just so it's long enough to hold the motor. Uh, and at this point, we can add the motor. So we can go over to m the Motors and Configuration tab at the top. See, there's multiple tabs. Rocket Design is where we were at the start. Motors and Configuration is where you decide the motors. So you need to select where the motor will go, you know, because Open Rocket doesn't know. Are you putting it in the body tube or the inner tube? Well, no, you're putting it in the inner tube. And then you have to add a new configuration. You can have Multiple configurations depend, so you can test out different rockets, but for now, let's just put one. And so you can see you can hit select motor, and then it will has a, a list of tons of rocket motors here. But you can just search it, so let's search H242. Let's do the reloadable kind. Um, important here, you want to set the ejection charge delay to be what it actually is. It probably isn't zero i think most some of ours are 10 10 seconds so just look on the box of the motor uh, so let's set that in and at this point uh, you can actually run a flight simulation because you have your motor so you can go to the flight simulations tab you just hit them that uh, and ideally you'd be able to hit run simulations but I guess it doesn't like it. And for good reason, because the rocket doesn't have fins. So over in the top right corner, you can see the stability. Stability is one of the most important measures for your rocket. It's just a measure of how straight your rocket will go. You generally want it to be between, definitely between 1 and 2, preferably above 1.5. Uh, if it's too low, you know, it's unstable, it'll corkscrew or whatnot. If it's too stable, it'll uh, uh, turn into the wind, actually, and could end up going sideways. Right now, it has no fins. It's got a stability of minus 9. It's obviously too low. So let's add some fins. You select the body tube that you're adding the fins to, and then you come up here and choose a fin. You have uh, a couple different fin types. Uh, trapezoidal, honestly, are the simplest. So you can have, you can select the number of fins, uh, a bunch of various parameters for the fins. So let, let's say four fins right now. Um, I don't really like how it comes up with these random numbers. I'm gonna make them square. Nice, even numbers. Uh, the num number that will most affect stability for your fins is the height, because that's just, you know, how far the fins stick out from the rocket, how much air they're hitting. So let's set that to be 3, and already, see, it's super stable now. But this maybe isn't the best fin design. For one, it's, they're made out of cardboard. So let's change that to plywood as it should be. 0 0.25 inches, or, you know, eighth inch if you feel like. Um, and sort of just play around with these, get some good shaped fins. So now you have a stability 1.88. That's more reasonable. Uh, so now you can start adding some of the other things in the rocket. So you'll notice that you have this inner tube here that is holding the motor in place. And right now it's just sort of dangling in the outer tube. Obviously it can't just dangle there. You have to have something to hold it in place. That's where centering rings come in. So. You can just click there, add centering rings. Again, these are made out of plywood. It, well, not cardboard. You, you can go for something stronger than plywood, certainly. But you know, if you're putting an H motor in there, don't make them out of plywood. Or don't make them out of cardboard, sorry. So you put one at the bottom, probably one at the top. So you can use the, the plus again to 
moved around. So on at or near the top of the uh, motor inner tube. So let's put it at right at the top then. And generally you want three or four, so let's put another one in the middle. And again, the inner diameter, outer diameter, that's just all calculated automatically based on the inner and outer tube, so you don't have to worry about that at all. It's just thickness and component material and, of course, location. So a cool idea is to put it at the top of the fins or near the top. So that way, when you come back to the fins, uh, and you, you need to add fin tabs. And fin tabs, well, I guess you don't have to add them, but it's generally a good idea because you then are attaching the fins to both the outside of the tube and the inside of the tube. So you can just go over to fin tabs tab, hit calculate automatically, and then you can have a look here, see there's fin tabs sticking into the rocket. And so you can add extra adhesive both here along the centering ring, along the inner tube, and the bottom centering ring, in addition to the stuff on the outside. This makes them a lot stronger. So you'll notice that as I've been adding things to the bottom of the rocket, the stability has been going down. That's because stability is a function of the distance between the center of gravity here and the center of pressure. The center of pressure is of course controlled a lot by the fins, also by the shape of the rocket. The center of gravity is controlled entirely uh, by the masses inside the rocket. So if you're adding stuff to the bottom, that'll make your rocket less stable. If you add stuff to the top, it'll make it more stable. Things like that. So now the rocket's looking pretty good. It just needs a parachute so that it'll come down nice and safely. So you just add the parachute. Uh, I find that 30 or 36 inch parachutes are pretty good for this size of rocket. Um, you can play around with this, see what works good. Um, let's put it relative to the bottom of the the uh, rocket. So now, of course, it's nice to put the parachute towards the top of the tube because then that gives you better stability. But as soon as your rocket takes off, everything that's inside it is going to get shoved as far down as possible because of the g-forces involved. So just to get a sort of worst case scenario, it's good to put your parachute towards the bottom. So you can see that even then, your stability is still OK. Uh, so now, in addition to the parachute, you need a shock cord. That's what attaches the bottom half of your rocket to the top half. Uh, what we like to use is tubular nylon, 14 millimeters. Um, and I think we generally say 300 inches, something like that. It's a good, good amount. You can't really go wrong with too much shock cord. And again, put it towards the bottom. So see, now your, our stability is going down a bit, so we might want to increase the height of the fins a little bit. Let's increase to 3.2, see what that does. Okay, 3.5. There, 1.72. Nice. And of course, you can play around with the fin shapes even more just to get a good stability and a, a good apogee, because uh, you probably care about how high your rocket goes, maybe how fast it goes also. Um, but in terms of safety, you should care about stability. And then you can go over to the flight simulations, and now it works. So you can hit run simulation. This will give you a lot of good information. So velocity off rod, you want that to be nice and high so that uh, your rocket can fly straight by then. Uh, this will give you apogee. Velocity at deployment is an important one because that's how fast the rocket will be going when your parachute comes out. And if it's going too fast, the rocket's going to slow down very quickly, and the parachute could tear the rocket apart. Optimum delay is helpful. Uh, that'll tell you what the ideal delay timer is on your rocket. So we have a device that can uh, let you sort of change the delay on the rocket. So it might come with 10, but you can change it down to 8, for example. Uh, flight time is helpful. 
time to apogee is helpful. Ground hit velocity, this is relevant for parachute sizing. You generally want that to be, you know, below 20 feet per second. If you build a stronger rocket, I guess you can go higher, uh, but that's the general idea. And a cool feature it has is this plot export. So this will show you this nifty graph of what the rocket is doing, when it's doing. So red is the altitude, blue is velocity, and green is acceleration. And with that, we have designed your first uh, level one rocket.